Okay, welcome back to Matt's Workshop. Today we're starting a new project. Uh, we're going to be doing the angle plate for our lathe T-slot face plate. Uh, this is a casting kit as a reminder. Just checking to see how much draft there is on this, uh, this casting. It's very rough, but it's, it's nicely made. I don't see any voids on the surface. Here you see a little bit of draft. So I'm just picking the best location to mount this so I could square it up. I want it to be as square as possible. Uh, again, we're using the new vise on the bridge port. That wire there is a piece of probably about eighth inch or so aluminum filler rod for welding. I'm using that as a bolster bar uh, to press against the back side of this casting to overcome any roughness in the casting or areas that are just not straight enough. Okay, I'm checking the parallelism or the squareness uh, vertical because there's no true flat square surfaces on this yet and uh, using my new vice handle I made in a previous video to gronk it down. And this is where I store the vice handle. Very convenient. Let's see how this surface mills. I imagine there's going to be a, a hard scale layer since it is a sand casting uh, and I don't know how uh, tough it will be sometimes it's very difficult and uh, wears tools out quickly sometimes it's a high quality gray iron and it just comes off like butter okay, throwing the machine in back gear so you gotta throw the power switch in reverse so it spins the correct direction just lining up the Base mill to try to get most of the surface in one pass. This is a three inch diameter base mill. And the cutter appears to be doing a really good job. Good chip formation, and it doesn't appear to be chattering. So here I've switched over to a half inch four flute solid carbide end mill. Uh, mill the one of the flat edges along the back there. Okay, touched on. This is a really sharp end mill, so the chips are coming off really well. They're good sized chips, which is kind of nice. Do it in a pass or so. That's what it looks like. And we're doing the same operation on one of the other edges. Uh, notice I flipped the part around, put the milled surface against the fixed jaw, and I'm still using the uh, aluminum bolster bar wire. So I've got those two edges parallel, the previously faced edge and this new edge in front. And now I'm facing the top of that. Lighting's really blown out here. I had the uh, spotlight a little too close for the camera, I guess. But you can still see uh, chips are coming off well. The cutter's doing really well. Oriented the part one more time, got it in the steps of the jaw, and I'm going to do the uh, one of the inside edges or inside faces. Okay, we just finished up the second inside surface. It's a good surface finish, no inclusions that I can see. Got a nice square, sharp corner in the back, but we're still 100 and 
17,000 oversized. So I'm going to take off one more pass, maybe 15 or 20 thousands on this side, and then redo the uh, the outside. One more time, take the rest off because there's still one inclusion visible there. I'm also going to speed up our end mill or our uh, face mill. 210 RPM up to 660 just to see how it does. I'm very curious. These cutters need to be pushed and I'm not really pushing them so I've got a good service finish but I'm looking for a great one if possible since I'm still learning about this new uh, insert. These are cheap um, 1604 you know, rectangular inserts. Uh, they only give you two cutting tips per insert um, but for the price it's less than a buck an ins uh, a cutting edge, I believe. And this, as I said before, this uh, face metal takes six cutters. I've got ten of that style, and another twenty coming of two different styles. So ten of uh, aluminum and ten of another type of uh, cutter with a little sharper edge and slightly different radius. Actually, the, one of the cutters I'm I'm waiting for. It's been in the mail for a week or two. Uh, it's actually specific for uh, cast iron, but this is actually doing a pretty good job. I mean, that's I can't catch a nail on it. You can hear a little bit. Um, it doesn't look beautiful, but that's cast iron. It's pretty good. I'm sure if I were to lap it or something, that would just look perfect. Okay, so let's see. Do bring the table up. Let's do fifteen thousandths. which is about the minimum you can take with these inserts. And then we'll take it out of back gear. And then speed it up to the slowest direct drive belt setting. Again, that should be 660 RPM. That's a big increase. Okay, um, in the feed rate, we'll just play that by ear. Literally. <laughs> At 660 RPM, this cutter's doing a really good job. Better than what well, I was getting at the 220, and I could run the feed rate a little bit more as well. Again, this is a very shallow depth of cut, 15 thousandths. I'm just trying to clean up the surface. Okay, here we are. Uh, just completed this pass here on the bottom. Uh, this is done. Uh, it's a very smooth, very good finish. I can see in the camera, I can see lines. I can't feel them. My fingernail doesn't pick up on any of them. So I'm happy with that. I'll bet. Well, I think I, I, I might end up uh, lapping this just a little bit, uh, just on some abrasive paper on the surface plate uh, prior to painting. Okay, so next steps will be to deburr some of these outside edges. I've got a lot of um, sharp burrs on them still. And then i got to figure out what I'm going to do for some of the rough cast areas. Remember, I milled this top plate, uh, so I need to blend that into the rough casting. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out, they did a nice job on the pattern design here. Uh, they included a nice cove uh, that goes all the way down here, and then uh, it, it blends in to this surface down here. Um, they took a little extra care to give it some style. That's very nice. Oh, and uh, that cutter that I've been using, this uh, six-tooth or six-insert face mill on an arbor from China. It's called a 400R8027, so I imagine 80 millimeters in this direction. Uh, let's see, 400 millimeters uh, is the face, so I assume that's around three inches. I don't do metric very often. And then 27 would probably have something to do with the um, the arbor. It's kind of like a shell mill arbor on there with a screw holding up in the bottom. Didn't have to change the inserts out. They've held up. These are very inexpensive. 1604. They go by different numbers, names. Uh, but you can find a 10 pack of them on eBay uh, for 17 or 18 dollars. You can get them at other locations even cheaper. Uh, you get two cutting edges per insert 
the way this holder uh, is oriented. There's another model that uses these inserts where they lay more in a flat direction, and I, I'm thinking of getting one of those um, just because, uh, you know, in a shell or face milling operation, I'm using the bottom edge in this orientation more. I'm not using the outside edge very much. If I get the other orientation, I can utilize both corner, both edges more, uh, maximize my investment in insert tooling. I'm happy with this. It took a full month to arrive from China to Southern California for some reason. Most things get here in a week and a half, two weeks. Um, but hey, it was 35 or $40 delivered to my door. So that's 10 inserts, the face mill itself, and an R8 Arbor for this, all for about 35 bucks. So that's, that's pretty impressive. And it did a nice job. Okay. Okay, now we're milling the keyway slot in the bottom. The, I put some red dicum uh, and did some basic layout just to ensure that I didn't make a bozo mistake here. This is, we reduce it down, let's see, I put in a 3 eighths of an inch solid carbide four flute end mill to do this slot. And then we'll do some through slotting later with this bit. So we're only going, uh, the plans call for an eighth of an inch depth of cut at three eighths inch wide. So it's a single pass, of course. And there you go. Now we have to mill out a through slot a part way through this uh, keyway slot. Now we put in a, let's see, a 5 sixteenths. All I had was a high speed steel end mill uh, to do this slotting. It turned out pretty well. It's a little short, so I went back to the 3 8 later on for some of the other slots, you'll see. But as you can see, this high-speed steel is pulling up a nice chip. Again, this is pretty soft gray iron. I finished the through slot in two passes, just so I can avoid too much tool deflection. And we're back to the 3 8 of an inch solid carbide end mill, doing the bolting hole slots. This will be in two passes all the way through. It's about 5 8 of an inch thick piece at this point. Quite a pile of chips. second pass. Should poke through in the bottom here. There we go. We're at the end of the slot. I'll lower the knee. That should do it. Got one more on the couple inches over on the other side there. Okay, now that those two were done, I had to rotate the part and do two more slots in the adjacent face. I'm just finishing that up here.
takes a lot of concentration to run the y-axis and the vacuum cleaner at the same time. There you have it, our finished, well, almost finished part. I will lap all these milled surfaces just to make them look good. <laughs>